Good morning, good morning, everyone. Um, I just felt super inspired, regardless of messy hair at the building site outside that's making a lot of noise, to record a video on content because I've been answering um, a few questions on content in different Facebook groups over the past, uh, past couple of weeks. And um, it's the same questions that's kind of coming up over and over and over again. So I thought instead of consistently writing the same reply, I would just like explain the whole thing in a video that you can all use. So when it comes to content, it's a necessary evil in our business, right? We all know from very early on that we have to create content, but I see certain mistakes like made over and over and over again. Um, and that doesn't make our content production easy. And it doesn't make our content production very consistent because we're completely overwhelmed. So the problem is that when we're first new to online business, a lot of times we don't quite understand why we are creating um, content or we think that creating content in itself is the answer to um, a lot of the challenges that we experience in our business. However, that's actually a little bit counterproductive because you end up creating content for content's sake. Um, so it becomes this whole of like, hey, I haven't posted to my Facebook page today yet. Let me just post something random that I found um, just so I ha I've posted something on my page because this is what I have to do. Um, so this means that you are actually spending way too much time on content. And it also means that it is fairly inconsistent. It's overwhelming and it's not very intentional. So you're not getting the results that you actually want to get for your business from the content that you create. So. I want to encourage you to see content um, as a means to an end, okay? So I want you to turn the whole thing upside down and to become way, 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 way more intentional about the kind of content that you create. So the first thing that I want you to ask yourselves is what am I actually selling? So if you are an online service provider, then you are selling a service. So ideally, the content that you create has to attract your ideal clients into your business. If you are selling an online course or a program or a mastermind or anything like that, then this is what you're selling to people. Okay, this is the product that you want people to buy. So the next thing that you need to ask yourself once you know what you want to focus on selling is who is this actually for? Okay. So if you are not clear on who you are trying to attract with your content, then the content that you create, oh, something is flying around in here, then the content that you create is not going to be um, attracting the right people and they will not buy from you. So you're creating content for the sake of creating content, not for the sake of getting clients for your service-based business or selling your course or your mastermind. So ask yourself, who is this really for? And then become super specific on people's pain points. So if you are, for example, a virtual assistant and you're trying to create content, then you need to understand who your ideal client is and what their pain points are, okay? And I don't mean spending hours writing some ideal client profile with which type of ice cream the person likes to eat. I'm talking about what are their pain points? What are their challenges? What are they struggling with that you can help them with? And then I like to ask myself, what does that person type into Google um, when they're struggling in their business? So if, for example, your ideal client hasn't actually realized yet that outsourcing to you, for example, or hiring a copywriter or hiring the designer is the answer to their question, then what would they type into Google? If they already know that your type of person could help them, what do they type into Google? What are they... Um, what are they concerned about? You know, is it like, how do you trust a virtual assistant with your business? How do you share passwords safely? How do you, what, what are they typing into Google? What are their questions? What are their challenges? What are their pain points? And how can you help them to resolve, um, to resolve those issues? Okay. Then I don't recommend that you plan your content for the next 12 months. Just because your business, when you do it right, evolves and grows so quickly, you may move up the scale fairly quickly. And when you are a new service provider, you might be working with clients who are just a little bit further ahead of you. Um, but as you grow, you will work with clients that are way, way, way bigger. They have different challenges, different pain points and different problems. Or maybe you realize that you didn't like uh, focusing on tech as a virtual assistant. You would rather focus on social media because you've realized that you have a gift for it. And now 
all of that content you plan for 12 months is no longer relevant to attracting your ideal client. So you've actually wasted a whole load of time planning for 12 months in advance. So I encourage everyone to break their business down into three month chunks and decide what your focus is for that three month period. So what am I selling in this one three month period? And then what you want to do is you want to think of like three main areas that you can focus on in your content to attract the person that you're selling your services to into your business. Then take each and every single one of those blocks and break those blocks down into four to five subtopics. So for example, if I want to focus my content for the months that I'm putting out in my business on content production, then I could um, in week one talk about um, why content is important for your business. In week two, I could focus um, on how to generate ideas for content. In week three, I could focus on why different platforms need slightly different types of content um, on the same topic. So different social networks are used for different things. People go there for different reasons. So you have to adjust your content to fit to that platform. Um, so once I have my three topics broken down into four to five sub areas each, I should technically have a list of 12 to 15 um, pieces of content that I'm going to create. Now, when I create that content, I don't want to keep reinventing the wheel. Okay, I want to do this as, efficient, as efficiently as possible. So what I encourage our clients to do when we work together is to focus on using a vehicle for their main piece of content that builds no like and trust. Okay, so if they can use video, I will always encourage them to use video. So I would get them to record a video just like this one talking about this one pain point that they can see people having. And then we take this one video and we pick the best bits of content for the different platforms that their business is generating content on. So for example, we would take a video, run a transcript, there's places where you can get a transcript done really easily and really, really cheaply, then post this video on YouTube. Post this video to their free content vault for their ideal clients, you know, maybe they have like, you know, get access to my virtual assistant content vault or something like that. Then we also um, put out a blog post that gets rewritten from the transcript. So it's just, it's a case of editing and tidying up basically and just making it sound good, adding headlines and things like that. Then we take the key pieces of content from that transcript and we generate social media posts off of that, okay? So... And then also, if you have an email list, if you're building an email list, you can use that video as a reason to email your list and maybe add a little bit of a personal spin to it. So um, I could talk a little bit more about my struggles with content when I started and, and the kind of things that I put out and what a difference it's made when I got really focused on my content. And I realized that less is actually more. So people need to hear from you a lot, but it doesn't mean that you need to keep reinventing new topics and struggling for hours on end because you don't know what to post about, you don't know what to talk about. So, and this system, when you have this system in place and running, it's also great because your business will grow. If you consistently produce content that attracts your ideal clients, your business is bound to grow, okay? Um, so you get to the point where you suddenly have a team working with you and you don't have to be the person anymore that has to create that blog post. You don't have to be the person anymore that's creating graphics, looking for photos to use on social media. Um, you don't have to do any of that anymore. So as your business grows, the only thing you have to do is to show up once for 10 to 15 minutes, record a video just like this one, and then give it to your team to handle the rest of the process because there are standard operating procedures, there are expectations set, you have a list of hashtags that have been researched that you can use. Um, so all of this makes for a super, super smooth content system and it allows you to not have to stress over... Um, what am I talking about next? What am I talking about next? And keep having to reinvent things. Um, I have lots more detailed resources and like additional things that can help you with this content production and ideas generation in our membership, which is the um, Crush It Club. Um, I'll drop a link into the description of this video just in case you want to come along and check us out. But um, this is really the basic system that you need to like be as efficient as you possibly can with generating your content and make sure you attract the right people into your business. It is important, but it's not the be all and end all of it, okay? It's one aspect of your business's marketing and you want to make sure that you do it as efficiently as you possibly can. 
If you have any questions on this or you have any questions on the Crush It Club, then you know to find me on Facebook. You can reach out to me um, and we can have a little bit of a conversation um, and answer any of your other questions. And I can always add to this video later on. And I hope you have an amazing week.